So guys, welcome back to The Sportsman. We've got a little bit of a bonus episode and I'm joined by EFL expert and Ipswich Town fan, Benjamin Bloom. Ben, how are you getting on? Well, as you can imagine for the last week or so, I've been absolutely lovely drinking it in. And I, I love that you're wearing a Christmas jumper here today in, in celebratory mood, but has it actually sunk in for you that Ipswich Town are in the Premier League? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna debate you on this. It says ice penguins on it, so I don't know. Is it a frosty Antarctic jumper? Um, yeah, I guess it has sunk in now. I mean, I'll say that with the caveat: the whole thing does just seem so surreal, doesn't it? That you know the the back to back promotions has been completed, and you've kind of got your feet up watching the playoffs. Um, genuinely, Simon, I was at uh, 75 minutes in that game at two nil up and. I don't know, Huddersfield bought Josh Caroma on. They were, bless them, they were dreadful, Huddersfield as well. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here come the two goals. Here comes the Leeds fight back. So I think the um, insecure um, football fan head didn't go away. But yeah, um, when when you start to see the the transfer links and, and whatnot happening, then yeah, it happened. It really did happen. What was it like to be there at full time and... and- try and talk us through your emotions of that final whistle going and it being done and dusted. Well, you had so many people viewing it um, in in different ways. You had the um, the kind of headstrong, super confident people. They, they were all heading for the pitch because I, I sit up in the top tier. They were all heading for the pitch 10 minutes before and, you know, people tapping me on the shoulder saying, never in doubt, as good as done. I guess I was a bit more reflective, just purely on the basis of, you know, I was watching last time it it happened and they got promoted, finished fifth in the Premier League, got relegated and never recovered for 20 years. So I was just really trying to just drink in the moment, Um, not to sound, you know, rain on anyone's parade. What if it's, you know, what if this is another massive, massive peak and you just want to be there and enjoy the moment? Because really for, for fans of, Four or five clubs, I guess, even in European football. I don't know, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, uh, Man City at the moment. It's not these moments don't come round very often. There's there's certain fans where every season, and that's the level that those clubs have set: win, 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 achieve, achieve, achieve. But you've just got to try and drink the moment in, and that's what I tried to do. I say it so many times, but football is about moments and Ipswich have had some brilliant ones over the last couple of years. Thanks to, in Maine, Kieran McKenna. Obviously, he's being discussed quite a lot at the moment. There was news this week that potentially Manchester United putting out feelers to see if he might be interested in being the next Manchester United manager. What do you think of his future right now? Do you think he'll be the Ipswich Town manager when you kick off your Premier League season in August? Um, I do. And I I did. Obviously, the Manchester United job is a pretty big lure for literally every football manager that's ever existed, ever. <laughs> there is some sense, though, that it's a bit of a hospital pass at the at the moment. But let's be you don't turn down the Manchester United job, do you? So, um, you know, I would... I'm surely they're going to go for someone with more experience, you know, in those massive jobs and if Kieran McKenna is one day going to be the Manchester United manager it'll be having managed in the Premier League for at least a season I don't know but yeah he he couldn't turn it down could he even if he does think it's a bit of a hospital pass these these people are not like you and me Simon they you know ambitious back themselves assume that they're just gonna achieve 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 no self-doubt whatsoever um with the promotion, I thought, okay, that's brought us at least another half a season or a season with him. Um, and get this Man United stuff. I know the betting odds have decreased dramatically, but I always say that's a liability, not a probability. That's just people having a punt on McKenna, you know, because they, they think there might be some value in it. But yeah, assuming um, Old Trafford isn't isn't looming for him, you would hope, He's going to be here for at least another half a season or a season, fingers crossed. I think there's two parts of that, and I think you're right on both. I think promotion for Ipswich, 
pretty much for me sealed that he will, you know, he won't want to go anywhere. He's got such a good thing going there and it's Premier League football, which is, you know, what, what he really wants. And you're right with Man United at the moment. That they, they they barely sign championship players. They're not going to take a risk on a manager who's not managed in, in the Premier League yet. It'll be a couple of years down the line for him. Um, how high can McKenna go, though? Is there no limit to his talent right now? And he could succeed as manager of Manchester United one day, in my opinion. As an Ipswich fan, you've seen the best of him. Would you agree with that? We don't know, do we? We just don't know. All the evidence with the coaching... Management at League One level, management at Championship level, tick, 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 age, tick. You know, worked as a coach at Man United and Tottenham before. You just never know, Simon, do you, when these when these people go in and they seem the most qualified people in the in the world to do the job. But, you know, can someone who got promotion in the Championship, first of all, can they manage in the Premier League? We don't know. We'll we'll find out. And then there's the argument of what is success at a club like Ipswich in the in the Premier League. You know, could they could they be in the middle of the Premier League? Could they do West Ham or Brighton? They're the ones that always get linked. I know Brighton near the top, but when it's Man United and it's that then is a because David Moyes was a fantastic Premier League manager in the middle doing above what Kieran McKenna's done in his career. He couldn't do Man United. I hope for his sake that that he does, but I also kind of hope for his sake that um, maybe it can plateau for a few years longer at, at Ipswich, put it that way. I think uh, aiming for mid-table for Ipswich might be the best idea for next season, certainly avoiding relegation. I, I don't think there's any stop in this Ipswich t- t- train. I'm so confident with the way that you're playing at the minute. I think you can carry that into the Premier League. Obviously, There needs to be some signings made. You touched on it earlier in the show about players you're getting linked with that you never thought would happen, maybe record signings. Talk us through some of those summer recruitment ideas and and those sort of players you think could be brought in to strengthen this Ipswich team. Well, the transfer record has to go, doesn't it? Because it was broken in 2001, I think, for an Italian goalkeeper called Matteo Serrani, and it was five million quid there. So. It's a very bad signing, actually, Simon, that really, really didn't work out. But um be nice to scrub that one off. Um, it's really difficult to judge, isn't it? Because the clubs that have done well, that are not saying Ipswich are lead size, um, more Brentford size, um, I guess. And some would argue maybe historically a bit bigger than Brentford, but you can't touch what Brentford have done in the last 10 years. Um, Sheffield United as well. Maybe that's a better comparison. Uh, They rode it out, didn't they? In terms of they kept the majority of their team, even though people can say League One players, but they were League One players playing in um, the Sheffield United team that finished ninth in the league. Um, Look, ninth in the league is not Ipswich's (laughs) objective at all. You're totally right. 17th in the league is going to be Ipswich's um, objective. And We've seen a lot of strategies. Um, Forrest obviously went gangbusters, survived, but breached FFP. Luton's the one where you look at it and you think, okay, that's sensible. You know, bit of an EFL All-Stars team. But they're going to be relegated. Um, So I don't know. Is it it the... And I think pretty much Sheffield United, if I've got memories of them going up in 2018-19 and finishing... Didn't make any massive signings, did they? I'm trying to remember now, but... They did remarkably well. It was the season they, they nearly got into Europe, or did get into Europe, didn't they, under under Chris Wilder? I, I don't think they ripped the squad up or made major investment, from my, my memory. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so either. So, But everyone knows if Ipswich do that and they barely make any signings, it will be the Norwich City example, where they had that extraordinary promotion the same season as... 18, 19, and they said, look, we're, we've been in a hole financially. We're clearing the decks. Nobody comes in and abject rock bottom finish. Okay, I give anybody in those seasons that have passed with the empty stadiums and the, you know, three months without football with the COVID outbreak. So, yeah, um, you tell me, mate, a concoction of all of the best, <laughs> best of those Approach is fingers crossed to get you 17 4 over. I think if you look at some of the championship players available on a free, and Callum O'Hare comes to mind for me, I think he'd be a great signing for Ipswich. 
Do you think you could get Amari Hutchinson back, whether that would be on a, a permanent or a loan deal? Not sure. Not sure. He almost finished the season too well, didn't he, in, in that respect? Would a... I mean... We'd be the favourites, you know, in terms of that he's been here before. I think there's one year left on the deal, which that makes it problematic. Because if you're if you're Chelsea, what, why are you going to loan him out for a season? Unless Chelsea are going to give him a nice fat contract and loan him back for another year, you would think. And we've seen the likes of, I don't know, Liverpool always used to do this well. Is sort of a Harry Wilson um, be sold for just absolute mega bucks? You know, you're not talking about five million there. You're talking about twenty million. Rian Brewster to Sheffield Wednesday as well. I'm sure. I mean, I suppose the Cole Palmer one looks like a good deal now from mm. Chelsea, doesn't it? But these players are elite clubs. Chelsea signed him for five million from Arsenal in the first place, so. I don't know. If Ipswich signed Amari Hutchinson for £20 million, they make business, don't they? Love to see what's going to happen um, this summer. A couple of clubs, more than a couple of clubs, trying to work out what their summer will look like. Uh, the teams in the Championship playoffs. And we had a couple of nil-nils to Boras on Sunday. Very tense and nervy games. Let's have a bit of a chat about the playoffs and how you see the second legs going. We'll start with Leeds versus Norwich. Um it was not a great game at Carrow Road, not a great atmosphere, but it felt like both teams were kind of just happy to take the nil and, and go back to Ellen Road. Yeah, I was there. Um, and look, I'll undercover, give Norwich... Undercover, I hope, Benjamin. Then. <laughs> oh, mate. Do you know what? They're, people in real life, would you believe, uh, not as big a jerks as they are on social media. And um, lots of Norwich fans did say... Do you know what? A few Norwich fans stopped me and said, congratulations, well done, Ipswich. So... Um, I did get a bit of grief, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. You, you put your face on the internet, you expect it. Um, I thought Norwich were actually by far the better side for the first 25, 30 minutes of that one. They were getting on top of Leeds. You don't know what the Leeds game plan was. If Leeds went there and said, look, I want a clean sheet and let's absorb. Daniel Farker mentioned the set plays for Norwich. They did that. Um, it was just very little in the way of chances for either side wasn't it and um you see the managers they're kind of playing to their bases aren't they and you've got David Wagner on the one hand saying oh, well nil nil it's not the worst result and Daniel Farker saying well nil nil it's not the worst result we'll we'll find out it's a one-off shootout now you'd make you make Leeds favorites in respects of it being at Elland Road but I was there for the Derby 4-2 defeat that is a funny place, Elland Road, if it goes against Leeds, where there's almost this collective from everybody, players, fans, intake of breath and, oh, here we go again. And yeah. I've never seen anything like that, Simon, that collapsed. They were 2-0 up going into half-time, toasting with everything going for them. They make a mess of a back pass, concede a goal, and all hell broke loose. So you tell me. I think it's a, I, there's, you're right. There's nowhere like it in the country. If they get an early goal, I think they'll be flying. But as you say. They did against they, Derby. They did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think if it gets to half time and they're not ahead, if it gets to an hour and they're not ahead, the longer it goes on, the more it suits Norwich. And I think actually having that second leg at home, might become a hindrance for them rather than well, a... Simon, he said exactly that. He said every minute that ticks by David Wagner goes in Norwich's favour. And this is a guy, nil-nil, 1-1, one, one, penalties, nil-nil, penalties. That's how he won the playoffs with Huddersfield. So I'm almost thinking if as soon as you get into extra time, if you've got a metre of who's favourites, Norwich are rising up the closer you get to penalties, in my humble opinion. I think we could be in a lot in for a, a long night on, on Thursday. I hate extra time, Simon. <laughs> this is the one thing I would change about the playoffs. Uh, you, give me your instant reaction to this. No penalties in the playoffs. When you get to 120 minutes, the team that finished higher in the table qualifies, yeah? And the team that finished lower has to go and win the game. I I don't mind that as an idea. Having watched us lose on penalties to Luton last last summer <laughs> at Wembley, having lost watched us lose on penalties to Man United at Wembley this summer. I mean, there you go. <laughs> sick of penalties. I don't think I think they're. I think the advantage for 
the home team and the team that finishes higher is getting that extra half an hour on home soil extra time. Agreed. Uh, as long as that, as soon as they remove the away goals, yes, agreed. And obviously I have a vested interest that Ipswich lost two years in a row on away goals. And you make a great point. Ridiculous. That actually gave the advantage to the team that finished lower because they had 30 minutes to get the get the more goals. Sorry, continue. No, yeah, you're you're bang on, I think. Um, I do love the drama of penalties. So <laughs> I've I've been on the receiving end of two dramatic penalty shootout losses and I still love it. I Mate, I was it. at Wembley for the Coventry Luton one, and God knows what you were feeling, but my heart was out of my chest. Just I know they're so focused, but watching those guys walk in the middle of that massive stadium to take the kick. And someone behind me when Darbo stepped up, someone shouted out, he doesn't fancy it. Look at him. Look at his... And you almost could tell, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. He didn't He didn't want to take that penalty. Anyway, we need to move on from my playoff part. <laughs> Sorry. Let's talk about Southampton, West Brom. Um, I feel slightly differently about this nil-nil in the fact I'm more confident that Southampton get through this one than Leeds get through their playoff with Norwich. I think Southampton are my favourites to go up through the playoffs. I'm pretty confident in them, to be honest. Ben, what do you think about this one? Um, why? Just give me just give me your rationale. I think the way they control games at home, I think their possession style, I think the way that if they get the first goal, it's so difficult to get the ball off them and chase the game against Southampton. And I also think... The karma, if that's the polite way of putting it, atmosphere at St Mary's might actually help their players. Um, and I think they beat Leeds in the final of Leeds get there, as we saw on the final day. Yeah, they're all part. I can't argue with any of those any of those points. And yeah, just does set, seem karma. But pick me a club that isn't as intense and chaotic as Leeds <laughs> United sometimes. So yeah, I take your point totally. I think you're right, actually. I don't know the numbers, but I think West Brom are the biggest example in the championship of the first goal being vital in all of their games. So you, I, I make you right. And if West Brom win, you'd imagine someone's pinging a set play in on minute 73 or something. And, you know, it's a clean sheet. Don't know about penalties, maybe. Um, it's going to be hard for Corberon to lock down this tie like he did for... Huddersfield against Luton. I was at both of those games as well. And if, do you ever come away from a game, Simon, and you're like, where did that get away from them? Do you know what I mean? They yeah. just kept them at arm's length. It's not like played badly, but, they, you know, Corbron's very good at, okay, you have the ball. By the way, you're not affecting us if you have it there, you know, because we're, and we're happy to head it, kick it. Um, yeah. He's the manager that. It, yeah, he's brilliant. And I think he is a, a brilliant playoff manager in controlling one of these ties. But against anyone else, I think I'd... Back, if it was West Brom Leeds, I'd be back in West Brom. I just think Southampton are too good this season. Yeah, uh, you, and you may well you may well turn out to be, to be right. And yeah, you put it down home, advantage and squad. And I know it's a separate tournament, but the points differential as well. You could say that for Leeds and Norwich too, couldn't you? But yeah, um, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. There's more chance of a surprise at Elland Road than there is down at um, St. Mary's. But I don't know. Russ Martin, he's got a... You are talking about Kieran McKenna earlier. He's got to finish a job somewhere and complete a season in... I know this is very binary, with with a with a he's got the playoff finish, but the playoff finish is a minimum with a year one parachute team. And let's be honest, fourth place was lower than minimum this season. I know Ipswich managed to split them, so I'm dancing around giving you a <laughs> giving you an answer here. But yeah, may, maybe I'll maybe I'll go with you and um and it might be it might be Saints by one. Do you know? I think I said exactly the opposite on an interview the other day. So I am. <laughs> I'm being nefarious here, Simon. You're going to have a successful clip now to put out whatever, whatever happens. Or an unsuccessful one, depending on how you look at it, mate. <laughs> um, let's talk about the bit of the gap between the Premier League and the Championship. As an Ipswich fan, obviously, you're heading to the big time now. Um, Sheffield United, Luton and Burnley all came back down for the first time. Um, all three teams got relegated. Do you think it'll be different for the promoted teams this season? Or is the gap 
getting too big? Um, I mean, the gap's always been there. I think the three going down makes it look very bad this season, particularly. Um, I had a look at the numbers. The average is still um, sort of 16 position in season one but there's a couple of people that dragged that we mentioned Leeds in ninth Sheffield United in ninth I think Brentford did 13th um so I don't think it's I don't think it's any worse this season than it ever is I think the gap is too big but I also think Simon the gap between Champions League and also Rands and I think the gap between Premier League and parachutes and the gap between parachutes and the rest of the championship. And then you can go on down. My my argument is always it's it's called the pyramid. It's absolutely not a pyramid because it's riddled with with cliff edges. I think what does make it look equally bad is Nottingham Forest going for it, breaching and surviving and almost saying, OK, you can stay up, but look at the gamble you have to take. And by the way, you're definitely going to breach FFP doing it. So you need to write in, okay, you're going to get deducted four points. And I mean, God, look at Ipswich. They're going to have a year of League One on their books, let alone two years of championship that Forrest had. So the gap is too big. But is this anything we didn't know already? And I mean, what's your take? Does the Does this outlier year just kind of make it look even worse, but it's still bad. It's clearly a thing, but I think this year has been blown out of proportion by a number of circumstances, such as Sheffield United selling and die and Sanderberg and, and things. Sheffield United, and then having all those defensive injuries, Sheffield United were a good team last season in the Championship, like a legitimately good team that could have had a go in the Premier League, and I think they were blown apart before the season started. Burnley, but Simon, if I may, really quickly, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. They took their gamble in the championship because mm -hmm. remember they were embargoed. It was almost like, right, you can keep Berger and Ndai for one year. You've got to bloody get promoted though. And then, and then they're out. So again, there's another cliff edge that they couldn't fathom not having the parachute payment or the year two parachute payment. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, I think you are right. I think, and also Burnley were majorly disappointing, but again, had other circumstances. Lyle Foster being out for a decent period of the season, a couple of injuries, um, Trafford signing didn't massively work out. Yeah, I really I liked him as well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he was the keeper to keep them in the Premier League. I think he'll be a brilliant keeper in the future. So I think if you're looking at those as the top two and them not quite producing and then Luton were always going to be up against it and I think they've done things the most sensibly I think they'll be in the top six of the championship next season if not the top two because of the signings they've made I think Leicester and Ipswich and a Leeds or Southampton potentially going up are going to make I think maybe only one of them three will go down potentially and we'll be talking about well, it differently can you see I, I think if the litigation happens quickly which it probably won't I think Everton will start with a minus and mm -hmm. I think Leicester at some point are going to have a minus as well. So whether that works well for Ipswich and whoever wins the playoffs. But again, Everton laughed in the face of a minus. They would have had nearly 50 points, I think, wouldn't mm -hmm. they, if they hadn't had the minus eight. Forrest survived with the minus. So it's not a, not a guarantee you're going to fail. I can't also remember the statistics exactly, but the statistics for the percentage of a playoff winner getting relegated is far higher than the champions of the championship getting relegated. Really? Because it, takes, it takes an extra month of your season out, doesn't yeah, it? True. Yeah. Such less preparation time. And also you finish lower in the table. So you're probably a worse team to start with. Um, we'll have to see how that one plays out, but we'll finish with this question for you, Benjamin. We're talking about Adam Morton a lot. Ever as a, I butchered his name. Michael. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> all starring for Palace at the minute. Um, Big T operas at Sporting. It seems like a lot of the best players that could be in the Premier League next season have come from the Championship. And I mention this a lot. Why aren't the likes of, of Man United or clubs higher up in the league just signing the best players from the Championship? Because they're so, so good and they've done it in England. So I'm going to ask you, what are three players that have caught your eye in the Championship this season that you'd hope to see get a Premier League move maybe this summer, if not in the near future? 
But it's hard because I don't, I'll give you a much clearer answer on Friday night when I know who's lost the playoff semi finals because mm-hmm. we can easily pick out some players from those sides. But I'll ignore the teams in the playoffs. Um, Philogene for Hull, I mean, it was a big, a big ticket that they paid for. And we think the thick end of five million, but he's just a tremendous player, isn't he? And um, not entirely sure why Aston Villa would sell him and then sign. Who was led to sign for middles? Rogers. Morgan Rogers. Yeah, he's yeah. Not Rogers, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think Philogene's absolutely brilliant. But also, I'm in a position at the moment where you can't question Emery because he's done such an amazing job. So Philogene would be one. Um, Latte left. Possibly he might need another another window, but he's finished the season beautifully. You mentioned O'Hare. Sheaf is going to be worth a lot of money at Coventry, but that feels like it might be parachute teams bidding for him rather than Premier League teams bidding for him. Um, Conway, possibly Bristol City, but, you know, do you need to... I know they've sold really well with Semenya and Scott there. Um, I was hoping to say Mads Frockier Jensen because he's he's kind of my, my kind, you know, a European <laughs> number 10, but he blows a little bit um, hot and cold, doesn't he? So... Those lads, and then it's definitely, uh, we know the names, don't we? Obviously, Somerville and Nonto and Gray for, God knows, boatloads of cash at Leeds. Um, West Brom, less so. Fellows, maybe, but um, as the youngster, Norwich, obviously, Rowe, Sarah, Science, um, et cetera. And Southampton, take your pick. Downs, um, Armstrong, um, Walker Peters as well. I oh, think. sorry, God, yeah, Walker, yeah, yeah. Walker Peters probably worth more than more than <laughs> anybody other than Gray, maybe just purely because of his age. But I totally take your point. And when you see, you know, Bournemouth and West Ham, Ben Rama and Bowen, you know, year after year picking up top championship players. But yeah, you're right. The top, real top top clubs seem to want them to be tested. You know, how much would Man City have paid for Grealish? Admittedly, he hadn't torn it up in the in the Premier League at that point. But, you know, it's 100 million once he's done a perfect season in the Premier League, isn't it? So um, any ones I've missed? Uh, potentially Jacob Greaves at Hull, I quite like in, in terms of defensive. Oh, God, left-footed English centre-back. Yeah, yeah very much. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Worth a bit. Um, we're not, I don't know who this Ben Sheik you're going on about is. <laughs> never heard of him. I mean... No, That's what I was right saying about Leith Davis all season, mate. Yeah. Leith Davis, yeah, no, these we, we don't talk about the, the good players that play for our clubs, but you know <laughs> that right now. They go under the radar and they stay there. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, his, his chief will be worth 15 to 20 million if, if any club wants him. I, I think as well that FA Cup semi final. I know all the scouts know everything about everybody, but you know, Coventry's FA Cup run and you know, playing on the wider stage, then. Everybody knows, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And and Van Avak as well, the right back, who's he's just incredible. But yeah, I think clubs need to pay more attention to the championship, is is what we've deducted from this, because there's so many gems playing at that level who can and will play a, a Champions League football and, and win things in their careers. Um, I think we'll leave it there for today. Then congratulations again on Ipswich Town's promotion. <laughs> <laughs>